Hey guys, so today we're going to be looking at infrared. Well, we're not going to be looking at it because it's beyond the visible light, but um, you could probably pick it up on this camera actually. So this is an infrared, oh, there we go. This is an infrared LED just here. It should show up as a little bit of a violety red color uh, on the camera. And next to it is an infrared photodiode. Now, the photodiode is, is essentially like a variable resistor. Uh, the more infrared light that hits it, uh, the smaller of a resistor it becomes, if that makes sense, so less resistance it has. We've also got an LED on board. Now, the idea of this is that it will detect distance. So, well, that's not quite true. The, the, uh, the photodiode there will detect um, the infrared bouncing off my hand. So it should vary in intensity depending on how close and how far away I am. And it's got a little bit of code in there, which means it fades out afterwards. So the idea for this was that it would become a table. <laughs> I explained it before, but I'll, we'll move on to something that looks a bit more impressive in a second, but this is the basic concept. So let's have a look at how the circuit looks. So here's probably one you're all very familiar with. This is an LDR circuit. So it's just a light dependent resistor, works on visible light. Um, and we're using it as a voltage divider. Now the infrared photodiode is very similar, except it's a diode here and its resistance decreases. So uh, it has a, a different uh, sort of symbol on it, but it's the same circuit. So this is exactly what I'm doing. I'm feeding five volts in. We've got a one mega ohm resistor here. Um, and you can alter that to get different results. It depends on what your sort of ambient infrared light is at the time, I guess. And then we're feeding directly into the analog pin. And that gives us this, uh, this ability to change those analog values just by reflecting a bit more of this infrared onto the photodiode. Now different materials will reflect differently. So my wallet, for example, is pretty good at reflecting uh, this, even though it's black, it should actually have the opposite property, but some, some materials won't reflect infrared light. So here's the interesting bit. These are my little pixels, I guess. These are the same thing that I just showed you on that small breadboard, but actually in, on Vera board. So these are four, four LEDs, so four LEDs per pixel. We've also got an infrared emitting diode there and a infrared photodiode there. So um, they perform the same action. They fade uh, when you're further away, when it's reflecting less infrared light and um, they get brighter the closer you get. So, but I'm running, I'm running five of these off an Arduino Uno. Now I'm doing that not through all of the analog pins because there are only five, I believe on the Arduino Uno. Um, and in fact, on the AT Mega 328, but I'm using a chip and uh, an LED driver chip to help me out driving all these LEDs with PWM. Now let's bring the board over so you can have a look, but these, I thought these would be interesting to put underneath the table, but the problem is the, the current requirements for these infrared uh, emitting diodes is around 40 milliamps at full whack, but so I'm not running them at full whack, but even so at 20 milliamps, if you're going to have, I was going to plan on 200 of these, then you're looking at an awful lot of power um, and heat. So, uh, and if you include these, um, the four LEDs on, on each, pixel, each pixel, if they were all running, uh, let's say 20 milliamps, so you've got 80 milliamps per pixel uh, and you want 200, it's an awful lot of power. So I'm gonna rethink this uh, and perhaps do something a little bit different and maybe have smaller quadrants or perhaps just, um, less power hungry LEDs, I'm not sure. Let's have a look at the, the board so you can see how I'm using the chips. Now I get that it's a little difficult to see because of all the mess of wires that I've got here coming from these little prototypes, but um, this chip here is the TLC5940, which is a 16 channel PWM driver. It will um, go from levels of zero to 4096, which is you know it's a lot more than the, the Arduino will kick out in, uh, in terms of PWM. Um, we've also got a 4051 chip, which is an analog chip, which takes in eight uh, analog signals and will kick it out over one analog line, meaning I only need to use one analog pin on the Uno. And that's great because they can be daisy chained together just like the TLC5940. So we could expand this out and scale it up to have many more of these. 
The only problem comes from um, sort of latency in reading those signals. Now, the, the latency on, on the 4051 is somewhere in the region of five microseconds, I think, something like that. It might be 50 microseconds, but it's a very small amount. But if you were to scale that up um, for 200 times and then add a bit of latency for the programming, then you might quite might start to see some, some delay. Uh, again, with the TLC 5940, there is some latency involved in that too. And much of it will be in, in the software itself uh, when it's only running at uh, 16 megahertz, is it? Uh, so this is the setup currently. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but I might make sort of smaller quadrants of these, perhaps just a fun little tabletop design rather than the full table, just a, a middle section or something like that. So anyway, that's one of the projects I'm working on at the moment.